Hello, and welcome to the Wayfaring Panda. I'm Annette. Today I'm going to be making a birthday card for a lady who's turning 80 years old. And her daughter said that her favorite colors were blue, green, and yellow. So I picked this paper from Lawn Fawn Spring Fling, and it's a flowered background. And I'm attaching that to my card base with my Scotch ATG gun. I'm using Memento Black ink to stamp the sentiment in the inside of the card. And this is a stamp from Stamping Up, and it's really old, so I'm sure it's not available anymore. The sentiment says, Rejoicing in God's Gift of You. Next, I'm stamping a bird from Art Impressions Watercolor Bird Set, and I'm using some Stamping Up ink, which is called Taken with Teal. I thought that coordinated with the paper on the front. I don't usually decorate the inside of the card, but I think it's good to use a little bit of embellishment in the inside to coordinate it with the outside of the card. The daughter of the lady I'm making this for has been a friend of mine since 8th grade. We met in youth group when I was going to the same church as her, and we've been friends ever since. And of course, we got to be friends with her mom. So she said that her mom likes gardening, so I decided this was a great opportunity to use my Art Impressions Flower Cart watercolor stamp set. And this was a special set given to people who took classes that particular year, which is 2019. Well, this isn't available anymore, but you can get other Art Impressions flower cards as well as flower pots. This is my take two of coloring this image. I didn't really like how it was turning out. The color of yellow didn't really match the front of the card. And also, I was using the rough side of the watercolor, and so I think that didn't help, as well as I didn't do very well with the leaves. However, this is only my second time doing this technique, so I'm still learning. So with this technique, you use watercolor markers and color your stamp. So the technique they taught me was on this one, you start with the color blue, which is 565. It's a dark blue. And now I'm going over this stamp with a brown, which is 969. That way it has a little bit more uh, varied color to it, like a weathered wood as opposed to a solid color. Next, I stamped the image on some scrap paper, which is actually the back side of the other one that I didn't like. And then I'm stamping it on the square that I cut out with a Lawn Fawn square die, so it'll have a stitched edge to it. And this is watercolor paper. I'm just using my chamois, it's a Lawn Fawn chamois, to clean off my stamp. Next, I'm using my smallest watercolor brush to go along the image. So you try to drag the color right next to the line, but not on the line. And I'm trying to make the color darker in the areas where the sun would not be hitting as much, so underneath a little bit darker. And so you want to go on the horizontal line and not cross any lines, otherwise you'll lose the detail. So the corners where I'm going to leave it lighter so that it'll look more dimensional. I'm doing the same on the legs and on the wheel. On the wheel, of course, I'm leaving more at the top of the wheel untouched because that's where the sun would be hitting. The thing that I like about this technique is that I don't know how to watercolor, and besides, I can't draw anything at all. So this allows you to use stamps, and still get a watercolor look. I'm using Tombow dual brush water markers for this, but you can use any watercolor type marker like Marvy for this technique. Next, I'm stamping the pots that come with the set. And these are um, not clear stamps, but they do have a cling, so you can put them on a stamp positioner or you can put them on an acrylic block. 
I'm using post-it notes to mask off my cart so when I stamp the pots I don't cover it up. I'm using the same colors as before, but this time I'm starting with the brown, which is 969, and then I'm using the blue, which is 565. And that way the blue will be more dominant and it'll look more of a gray color, kind of like metal as compared compared to the brown look of the wood. Now, since I'm doing blue over the brown, I do get some of the brown on my marker and I just rub that off on my paper towel. Next I use a stamp positioner to figure out where to stamp the pots. I found out that my stamps needed to be on the other side so I moved it over. And then once you stamp the acrylic, then you move the pots where you want them and then I'll put my stamp positioner corner back on and that's where I'll know where to put my acrylic block with the stamps. You can see that I got it a little off because the pot on the right hand side is hanging off the cart. So I just fix that by using my watercolor brush and dragging the color down. So the next time I need to move my post-it note so that I can see where the cart ends. Next, I'm using my watercolor brush to drag the color towards the inside and that'll give the pots a more dimensional look so they'll look more round. Next I'm using color 158 which is a green and I'm coloring one of the grass stamps from the foliage collection. I'm using the grass as some foliage in my pots and with the grass you need to do it in a walking motion so the rule they usually have for this method is that you stamp five times and so that you're image that you're using, in this case the grass, has different shades of the green so it'll give it more dimension. And you usually with the grass walk it to the left or the right. And then I'm using my brush just to go up and on the grass just a few upward strokes. Next I'm using a flower stamp and using the color 443 which is a blue to add some flowers to my flower pot. And when you color with the marker onto the stamps, you want to use the side of the marker. Try to use the tip. First of all, you wear your tip out, and also it'll take forever. With the flowers, you also stamp about five times, but you move the stamp in a circular pattern, and that gives you a more dimensional look also. Next, I'm using my water brush and dabbing my flowers with the side of the brush as opposed to the tip. And this will give it more the idea flowers, which is how watercolor should be as opposed to definite images, because then it would just look like a stamped image. I'm adding the same grass and flowers and one of the other pots, except this time I'm going to use yellow for the flowers, which is color 985. The small grass stamp comes from the foliage set 4051 and I got the flower stamp, which is a daisy, from the flower set 4052. I'll list all the products that I'm using in the description below. Some of these will be affiliate links, but they don't cost you anything extra to use but I do get a small percentage of a commission from any sales that the links generate, and that helps support my website. I'm using the color 985, which is kind of a yellow-orange color. I think this one turned out a lot better than the first color I used my first attempt at the flower cart. Next, I'm using the small vine from the foliage set. 
and you don't even have to color the whole stamp. You can use part of it. So I'm just looking to see whether I want the top or the bottom. I decided upon using the bottom and I'm using my green marker. Use the same technique with the vines. So on this one, I started at one and try to go back and forth from the left to right so that it has different dimensions of color. And then I just dab over the leaves. I didn't really think it was full enough, so I added it some more. I don't think my vines turned out great, so I need a lot of more practice with that. Next, I'm using the foxglove stamp, and I'm using the color blue. Can't remember if I used 515, or actually, it looks like I used. 443 on this one. With the foxglove, you go in upward motion, stamping kind of back and forth. I did this about three times just to look like there's several stalks of foxglove. And then I dab the flowers with some water. For the last pot, I'm using the small foliage again with the same green. And this time, I'm inking up the top of the vine. Next, I'm adding some more foliage, but this time I'm using the bottom of the vine. On this one, I'm using the salvia from the flower set, and I'm coloring the stem green. And I'm coloring the flower with the same yellow that I did before, which is number 985. With this flower, I stamped once, and then I stamped five times to the left and right of the first flower and then I'm dabbing it with the water just as I did before. Next I'm stamping the canopy of the flower cart and you could leave this off if you wanted to and I'm using the brown color that I used before which is number 969. I'm using my stamp positioner to get the stamp where I want it. It turned out that the salvia is too high because it goes up to where the canopy is and I couldn't put it any higher, but I resolved that later. I'm just going over the edges with my watercolor brush to give it that watercolor look instead of a stamped look. And I'm leaving the top and the middle undone since that's where the sun would be shining. I'm just using a pencil to draw the lines for the post since those aren't included. And the reason for that is so that you can make the canopy as high up as you want, depending on what you put in your flower pots. Next, I'm going to color some stripes on my canopy. I was originally going to do blue, but I'm doing yellow because of the salvia, and then I'll cover that up. And you can use the little scallops as a guide of where to put your stripes. I actually ended up liking the yellow on here even though I wanted to use blue because it kind of brings out the yellow and this pattern paper. I don't have a palette so I just colored my marker on one of my acrylics that I use for my stamps. I didn't realize that I pulled the image off screen but I just turned my cart sideways to paint on the stripes on the top. And then I'm using my straight edge to draw in some spokes on the wheels. Next I use my Nouveau glue to glue on my image to my card front. And you can use whatever glue that you have. I find this works really well. I also added a bird image and some foliage and flowers to the bottom of the cart. I also signed my name to the paper before I glued it on. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give it a like. And if you haven't already done so, I'd really appreciate if you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.